We're going here down to the E-Complex. We have to lock up a couple of kids in segregation for battery on a fender. They, they jumped in the fender. There's three of them. So we're going to take them to SIG. So what did, uh, what did the report say? I mean, they just, for some reason, had it out for this kid? And... Uh, we have no clue of what the motive was. So uh, what do you expect their reaction is going to be when they see you walking in? You never can tell. You never know. Yeah, you guys don't seem nervous. Do you get used to this? Or tell me what your feelings are as you're getting ready to walk in, because these kids can be impulsive. Yes. It's, it's everyday rotation. Now you just, you just, you know, you go do it, and it's pretty much the same every time. You don't know what to expect, so you're just ready for anything. Obviously, if these kids were capable of battering the fender, they're also capable of going after stuff. Yeah, they have. They have what? They have battered staff on occasion, so you just gotta expect anything to be ready. Cox, Brady, Cox in room six. All three of you are in the same room. They're going to say you can mark they them They just up. woke us up, I don't know. They're going to say Thirty-one, thirty-five. Forty-eight, thirty-five. Go forty-eight. Air ride with those three offenders. Come here. Obviously, you guys were brought down here for a reason. You want to talk about what you did, what happened? We don't know yet. We just, I don't know. They came wake us up out the bed and said that we were going to say it. We usually know what we did because we usually go right when we do it, but we ain't did nothing yet. 
Yeah, because that's what I thought when I walked in. Obviously, you'd know you were going to be taken somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So I hear there was a battery yesterday. Do you know anything about that? They said we battered somebody, but I don't know. I think they got the wrong people or something. So you didn't buy the battery or anything? Every time I go to SEG, I admit for what I do, and I ain't do nothing this time. I always admit if I get in a fight or something. So you've been in SEG before? Yeah, I've been here for two and a half years. You've I've been? Yeah, in this place. You've been in this prison two and a half years? Yes, ma'am. What'd you do to get in here in the first place? Uh, Grand Theft Auto and uh, escape and assault and run away and stuff. So when you were on the outside before you came here in Pendleton, I mean, when you... You know, when you're in the midst of Grand Theft Auto or Escape, do you think about what you're doing before you do it, or? I what? thought about I thought about what I was doing, but I was I was I, know, I had friends around and stuff trying to impress people, but I was having fun at the same time, so I didn't think about coming here and then. So what is it? You just think you won't get caught, or you just do it for fun? Or? I was doing it for fun, but I was doing it all the time, and I never got caught, so I just getting caught wasn't on my mind because I hardly ever got caught. How old were you when you first started getting in trouble, do you remember? Like 11. How do you get in trouble when you're 11? I don't know. I mean, was there something going on at home that... I used to, I started getting in trouble because I used to run away a lot and stuff when I was little. What were you running from? Just everything. I used to run away to friends' houses and stuff, and then they called the cops and I'd go to juvenile and stuff. But I always got out. And then when I turned 13 and stuff, I started doing other stuff, like major stuff, stealing and stuff. So it just kind of got worse over the years? Yes. Now that you've been here two and a half years, if you get out, are you going to stay straight? Yeah, I'm trying to. That's why I don't want to go home yet, because I ain't ready. I want to wait until I learn my whole lesson so I don't try, so I don't come back or nothing. Because yeah. when you get out, you're going to be 18, right? Yeah. What happens if you start? Going back to your old ways once you're out. I'm not going back to my old ways. I want to come here for a long time again. Nathan, is that what name? So, why do you think you're, why do you think they came and got you? They said battery. They didn't do nothing though. So why would they identify you, Keith? Because they put the time out for it, but they said we're the only ones in the walks when it happens. So, I think it was us. Do you know who was battered, or did you hear anything about it? I mean, I know you guys kind of know everything that goes on every week. I don't know who got battered, but I didn't know who done it. What'd Say you say we done it. I don't even know how to tell them if I've done it. I mean, so what'd you hear about the kid that got battered? What happened to him? He said somebody hit him in his mouth. He had to get stitches. So, I don't know. so how long have you been in Pendleton? Three years. You've been here three years? Yep. And you're 18? I turned 18 31st. So you were 15 when you came here? Mm -hmm. So what'd you do on the outside that brought you here? Everything. Stupid stuff, really. Are you sorry about what you did now? Or? Yeah, I am, but can't take it back now, though. So how much longer do you think you're going to be here? Yeah. Hopefully not long. I'm trying to get a court date. Go on, but, mm. So what's it like being locked up? Obviously, you guys didn't know each other before you came here, right? So, you know, if somebody's watching, some kid out there's watching, and, you know, he's a little, you know, out there gang banging and running the streets thinking it's cool, what would you want to say to somebody watching this from somebody on the inside? The same place to come on me. I'll try to be a little more. You try one? Be a role model, I, I tell him what it was like in here. Yeah. I wouldn't try to scare him, but I was trying to kind of scare him at the same time so he wouldn't want to come here and so. stuff. So I don't think nobody wanted to come here. Would that have helped you, do you think? What would have helped keep you out of a place like Pendleton? I never, if I had like a scare tactic, like where I came here and saw what it was like, I never knew what it was like, I just came and I was stuck here. Then I adapted to the environment, I got institutionalized. So that's one of the reasons we do the shows we do is so other kids can see what it's like from your point of view. So what would you want to tell them? What would you say? It's the same place to be on me. Just 
We thought this whole family is rough being here, really. It's basically been locked up for years. It's hard to go home in this facility. Those get pulled down negative stuff by negative periods. It's not the place to be, really. You know, we've talked to other kids who've been here in Pendleton who've gotten out and have done pretty well, you know, for like four months. Yeah. And then other gang members start coming around again and they get lured back into the same stuff. Are you afraid that once you get out that life will be the same on the outside? No, I think I'm, I'm more mature than what I was. I think I can handle it now. I'm about to be a grown man and stuff, so I got, I got to look at life different instead of being just all about finding a little kid. I'm trying to, I'm gonna go to back to school and get my, I got my GED, but I'm gonna go back to school and get my uh, high school diploma, get a job and stuff, go to college. What would you want people to know about you guys that you think they don't know now? Because people who drive by this facility probably think, you know, there's bad kids in there. What do you think people don't know about you? What would you want them to know? Not, not everybody bad. I, I ain't gonna lie, I was bad when I first got here because I was kind of upset that I was in here. But after a while, being bad ain't gonna get you out, so you just gotta be cool. I've been cool. I ain't been to Segd on her for a while. So how do you feel about being in Segd? Um, I wouldn't know what I did, kind of. So I, mm -hmm. so I'm supposed to get a visit this weekend. I ain't trying to be down here a while for my visit. Who's supposed to visit? My mom, my sister, my grandma, my stepdad. So you get visitation? Yeah. How often do you see your family? Almost every weekend, every other weekend. Sometimes through the week. That's pretty rare from what I've seen. A lot of kids don't get visits at all. I'm from Evansville, so it's kind of a long drive, too. But they come see you. How do you feel about them seeing you like this? I don't like them seeing me like this, but my mom, she just got out of prison like three months ago, so I used to have to visit her like this, so she kind of know where I'm coming from and stuff. So what's what's that like watching a family member go to prison? What's, it, that, what's that do to you as a kid? I'm not saying I follow my parents. Well, I did kind of follow my parents' footsteps and stuff because they were in the family because my dad in prison now, and he'd been there twice, and my mom just got out, and she was there for five years, and now I'm in here. The only person... Like my big sister, she never got in trouble yet. And I'm kind of proud of her that she didn't follow me. So my little sister didn't either, or my little brother. They ain't got in trouble. I hope they don't. So watching them go through that didn't prevent you from ending up someplace like this, did that? Yeah, because I got, a, my, one of my little brothers passed away when he was 13. He'd be 13 now, he drowned, and I used to look out for him, and I never started really, like I got in trouble and stuff, but then I started staying out of trouble trying to look out for him, and then when he died, I started getting in trouble again. Just seems like a lot of you guys that we talk to, by the time you get to Pendleton, a lot of stuff has happened in your life before this. A lot of stuff. And almost everyone tells us it started young. So what can, what can any adults do from early on to help kids who, you know, start getting in trouble young? I don't blame it on my parents, but when I started seeing the first side of drugs and, like, people get battered and stuff, it was from my family and stuff, so I kind of grew up around them, and then I was like, I didn't know that it was bad because I was so young, so I did the stuff, and then by the time I knew it was something bad, I already had it in my bloodstream, I was getting in trouble for it. Pretty loud down here, huh? Yeah. That kid don't ever want to go home. That's why he yelling. Really? Yeah, he act up all the time. He got to stay down until he leave. You know, we've, we've talked to other kids who actually wanted to come in to say, like got in trouble on purpose to come down to say, because they were afraid they were going to get beat up. Yeah, and they be getting their food took and stuff. That's not me. I don't have to worry about that. I don't like coming to say, but I always end up coming. I don't know what it is. So anything else you'd want to say, you want people to know how you feel about where you are, what your life is like? This ain't the right place to come. You don't want to come here. You think kids out there think it's maybe a badge of honor to say you serve time in some place like Pendleton? Some people, they probably... Until they come here, so they see what it's really like. 
Do you have any remorse at all for, you know, any of your victims on the outside, whether, you know, rob somebody or beat somebody up? I mean, do you feel remorse? Have you had time to think oh, about it? I never thought about it, but, yeah, I got remorse for when I've done it. So you don't think about it when you're doing it, but then as time goes on? Yeah, you think about it once you get older. Look back at what you've done. But when you're 13, 14, it really... No, you really don't. Then when you get older, you see, trying to be a grown man and stuff, you just look back and I'm like, dang. Mm. Were you guys both in gangs on the outside? No. No. That's rare. Most of the kids we talk to here have been. Huh. Final words? Just, kids don't want to come here. They don't know what it's like until they come. A lot of kids out there wouldn't make it here. What's it take to make it here? I don't know how to explain it. A lot of people that don't make it in here is because they trying to go home and stuff, so they don't be trying to fight and stuff. So they get their food took and stuff. And that's why I've been here so long, because I wasn't going for it, and that's why I ain't went home yet. I'm, I'm doing good now, besides this little stuff going to say. I don't know what I did yet, but. Because I think a lot of people on the outside would say, just do the program, don't fight. Get through as fast as you can. Are you saying it's not that easy? Yeah, it's hard not to fight in there. So what's, what's your hope out of the end of all this? What, what do you think is going to happen next? What do you hope happens? Mm -hmm. I hope that I learned my lesson from this and I won't come back once I'm old. You're hoping what? I learned my lesson from it. I've been here long enough to sit Time to go home? Yeah. What would you, would you have family at home that you're going to go home to? Or where would yeah, you? I'm going to my grandma. Going home to your grandma? Mm -hmm. So have you lived with her most of the time? Or? Yeah. Yeah. She raised you? Yeah. Are your parents in the picture at all? Oh, uh, they both died. Your parents both died? Mm -hmm. When you were younger? Yeah, I'm about 12. Really? Do you think that had something to do with why you started getting in trouble? Or? That's when I started doing drugs, yeah. Really? Yeah. As early as 12 you were doing drugs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's young? Mm-hmm. What would you want to say about your life of drugs? That messes up your whole life. Once you get into drugs, you get into other more negative stuff than that. Robbing, stealing. And that's when you get locked up. And not the right thing to do with. So a lot of times drugs are at the root of the crimes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys talking to us. We, uh, we just, if, if you, uh, we just have to have you sign the lease for him it's okay that we talk to you. That's okay. We can't show anybody that doesn't want to be shown. All you have to do is just your signature right there. So when's your scheduled release date, do you know? There's, I know it's indeterminate sentences here, right? Because yeah, I did have a DT, a determined sentence. We get released in two years, but then they pulled my DT when I started acting up when I first got here. So now I gotta just complete the program. Is it Brandon? Yes, Brandon. Well, good luck, guys. I don't know what do they do from here. We're about to put some scrubs on, some uh, green or uh, gray scrubs on, and go to the room until they tell us what's, what we died for. And then we'll sit down here in the room, get our tray served to us until they serve some major on whatever happened. We plead not guilty or guilty if we did it or not. That much rank on him. Huh? He come over here like that. Oh, uh, listen.
Stick the other one out. Hear me. That, that fat motherfucker with someone's ass through the window and she's doing something. What's going on? Probably the problem is it could have been a little bit too. Thank you. 